Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So today we're going to talk on a slightly different subject and it, we are going to talk about the implantation window. So let's go back to the implantation window and what is the implantation window? An implantation window is an exposure of the endometrium to progesterone. And so when you look at almost all the studies or all the investigations that we carry out in the implantation window, you will be looking at specifically uh, the exposure to progesterone. And this was quite a unique study. And I'd say hats off to his researcher who put forth this study. And what they were trying to prove is that in a natural cycle, the implantation window is wide and it's flexible in, and you could only test it properly in a, f a frozen embryo transfer. So when you go to the implantation window, an implantation window, it takes a curve. And so what we know is that if pregnancy is in the old, and this is the 1960 and 1970 data, and if it came at the either side of the implantation window, miscarriage rates tend to increase. So, so what did they do? And they said, well, what do we do with vitrified blastocysts and there's no consensus in the optimal transfer if you're using a natural cycle and what type of cycles do we have you've got a natural cycle where we where we depend on LH surge and then you've got a modified natural cycle where you intervene by giving an HCG to induce ovulation and do the embryo transfer and then you have got the programmed cycles and in a program cycles, you can either downregulate and then give estrogen, or you can you can start with a medication right on the first day of the period and then give uh, give estrogen. So if you're using a natural cycle, what you are dependent on, you're dependent on the LH surge detection and the or the urine LH kit. So in this study, they use the the blood LH levels. And it's a very unique study. And what they were trying to prove is they were trying to prove better whether it is better to transfer the embryos six days after the LH surge or seven days. And so what do we normally teach sometimes? We say seven day, so Monday to Monday and Tuesday to Tuesday and seven day period in which you put back the embryos. And then they wanted the LH surge to be more than 20 international units per liter and they used the other threshold. The secondary objective was also to look at the level of estrogen and progesterone level six days prior to the transfer. So again, we measure estrogen level sometimes and, and the, we wanted to see how does that work. So natural cycle scans from day 10 and LH concentrations measured every day. And the LH surge was identified as greater than 20 international units per liter. And you develop, put them in three groups. And now have a look at it. And, uh, See, group one was when the LH was more than 20 on just one occasion and then it dropped or it was never measured. And it could either be A, B or C. And group two is LH of greater than 20 on two occasions, an A and a B or a B and a C. So you had two high LH levels maintained and a blastocyst transferred was six days after point A. Now group 3 was slightly different and group 3 was again two occasions of high LH so it could be an A or a B or an A and a C and then embryo transfer done seven days after point A. So, so the first day of LH surge was taken. So let's have a look at the results and the results were quite fascinating. So in group 1, 2 and 3 the pregnancy rates and the ongoing pregnancy rates were very much the same. So, you know, if you, if you look at the ongoing pregnancy rates, you're looking at almost between 62 and 64 percent, which is absolutely fabulous. So you're not seeing any drop in pregnancy, pregnancy rates, even if you do a day six transfer or a day seven transfer. And, and that's the beauty here. And when you looked at the LH levels and again, what are, we, what are they trying to say? And they're trying to say that if your LH levels are higher and which basically means if you if you, and let's put this way, there's a better activity on the oocytes and is that going to change the results? And the answer is no. In any LH which is more than 15, the pregnancy rates remained very much steady 
between day six and day, day seven embryo. So that again does not have much difference. Next, they look at estrogen levels uh, six days before transfer and to the, to the previous day. So uh, two estrogen levels done and just before we started cyclogest and then you looked at the estrogen levels on two consecutive days. So we saw a rise of estrogen and then the live birth uh, ongoing pregnancy age were very, it was 67% and, and if you show the E2 level up or go down, then the pregnancy rates were very much 64.8%. So there's no difference again during the embryo transfer. And that's why this study is quite unique and, and, and quite challenging. So in a natural cycle, the implantation window seems to span at least 24 hours. And this, that one day increase in embryo transfer rate does not seem to make any change in pregnancy rates. And so what do we know about LH surge? And that is something unique. And an LH surge in almost two thirds of women occurs between midnight and 8 a.m. in the morning. And that's very specific. And I always thought that the LH pulses change at night when a woman is sleeping. In fact, we know that the cycle to cycle variation that may occur and the amplitudes of LH go between 2.5 times to 14.8 times higher than the baseline. So that's that variation is very difficult. And again, it's not just one peak and you, know, you could have one peak, you could have two peaks and you could have a plateau of LH in nature. And again, that variation is also seen in a large number of women. Now, the best onset of LH and ovulation is an increase in surge between 34 to 36 hours. And that is the most important marker of ovulation. Now, what we know is that the, in the ERA test, this, it's very specific in the ERA test, which is, looks at the implantation window. It is sensitive to a 12 to 24 hour shift. But if you compare these two studies, they're quite inconsistent because you've got a natural based study which says that the implantation window can vary by a, a day and that will not have a difference. And so, but if you again look at ERA, and ERA, which is the endometrial receptivity assay, is used for recurrent mis implantation failures and it could be quite uh, difficult. So at present, as I say, the, as ERA is a very much a useful tool, we still don't know exactly where the implantation window lies and if the implantation window differs. So if we, and what is the summary of this? And, and the summary of this is, one is that nature's implantation window is wide and it's not specific for embryos. So unlike what we do in, in, a, in a medicated cycle, here, the implantation window seems to vary almost by 24 hours. And that's something new that we have learned uh, in, by this talk. So if you again, if you like this talk and subscribe to the YouTube channel, because that's where you can uh, either download uh, talks, which are much more easy to do. The uh, other thing is, you know, share the page because, you know, I, I do it because I want knowledge to spread and whatever I read, I want people to benefit from that. And if you do want to join our course, then we, we, uh, we'll see you in November. Thank you.